But uh, if you, you look at this lady, uh, she holds the uh, world record uh, of her hair length, 5.6 meters. And she did not hear, have her hair cut from the year 1973. So her hair actually is uh, older than me. So in the face of various injuries, how can a uh, hair follicle maintain its uh, energy? Uh, especially, you, you can look at here when this is a PCR data, when hair follicles are dam damaged by uh, inflammatory insults. On the left side, here, all the hair are lost. But you can also see that some broken hair, they emerge from the skin surface and continue the same energy. So it tells us that hair follicles, when they are in energy, when they are injured, they attempt to repair themselves to continue the same energy. And this, uh, this uh, case is uh, more, uh, it has been clarified uh, in chemotherapy induced uh, hair loss. If you uh, treat them mice with a higher dose of cyclophosphamide, uh, 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 you will induce a uh, uh, catagen entry. But at a lower dose, hair bulb is damaged but soon repaired to continue the same energy. So how to name this type of reparative regeneration during energy? Uh, we call it energy uh, hair follicle repair uh, as attempt for structural restoration to resume the ongoing energy after uh, various injuries. The question is that how do energy hair follicles repair themselves? We take a radiation induced uh, hair follicle injury as an entry point to dissect uh, the pro this problem. We irradiate the mice in full energy with very dose of radiation from <coughs> to uh, 7.5 gray. The 2 gray is the, the dose they usually use in the clinic. Uh, after radiation injury, you can see this tunnel staining. There are many cells. Uh, dying in the matrix area because these cells are highly proliferating and at a higher dose of 5.5 grade, there are more cell apoptosis. And we quantify this, you can see from here is 2, 5.5 and 7.5. So as the dose of injury increases, there are more uh, apoptotic cells in the uh, hair matrix. And, uh, when we, uh, when we look at the discharge, you can see that at 7.5 grade, uh, it, it actually induces severe hair loss, and uh, the hair follicle shrink continuously uh, into telogen. So this is a uh, uh, dystrophic catagen, so it induces a premature uh, telogen entry. But when we induce, uh, we irradiate mice at a dose of 2 gray, you can see here that there is a shrink, mass shrinkage of hair bulb, but the hair bulb structure is soon repaired before 72 hours. So we call it uh, early regenerative attempt. This attempt ap appears before 72 hours. And uh, there's, uh, there's many more hair loss in this mice, this mouse. When it increased the dose further to 5.5, you can see there's a, a, a progressive shrinkage, shrinkage of the hair follicle. At 72 hours, this is the shortest dose, but the, this epithelial strand is still longer than telogen hair follicle but the hair bulb is lost. From 72 hours and on, uh, uh, the hair follicle, the hair bulb structure is repaired. We call it late regenerative attempt. So the question is that uh, for type 1 dystrophic energy response, a uh, low grade injury, is repaired before 20, uh, 72 hours. What is the cell origin for the early regenerative attempt? We look at a Bosch stem cell, we did not see any apoptosis of Bosch stem cell at this, uh, at this dose. We, the, this is a BRD pulse labeling. We don't see the proliferation of Bosch stem cells. Then we do the image trace with K93 uh, PD tomato. You can see here, at zero hour, we, we mark the cells. But on day five, the Bosch the labeled Bosch cells, they still stay in the Bosch area. So it means that Bosch stem cells are not actively uh, involved in the repair process uh, after radiation injury that too, um, too great. 
Uh, this is uh, uh, so. What what are the cells that contribute to the paradigm regeneration? When you talk about uh, uh, tracing amplifying cell in the energy, you got PEC cells. We usually refer to the uh, the matrix cell. But if you look at the, the, a very uh, pioneer work from uh, Nicholas, he used single cell labeling and tracing and found that uh, the energy here for people actually are, are maintained by three uh, distinct populations of uh, uh, text. But the first is the uh, germinating cells. The germinating cells are responsible for the inner structure, from inner sheaths, and, and uh, comparing there all the way to the uh, cortex. And this is the, is it called a lower proximal cup. So this is a epithelial cell. This is not a thermal, thermal cup cell, or not thermal sheath cup cell. This is epithelial cells. So this is another uh, population. These cells, although they are in the hair bulb, they do not contribute to the internal structures of energy hair follicles. Another group is the outer rushy cells. So outer rushy cells, they take care of themselves only. They don't take care of other areas. So we can assume that there are three distinct populations of tech cells in energy hair follicles. And we injure this part. So when the tech cells in the, uh, the matrix or germination cells are killed by uh, radiation, radiation injury, can the tech cells from the lower proximal cup contribute to the, to the regeneration process? Uh, we stand a, a hair follicle with K5. Uh, K5 is exclusively uh, expressed by the uh, basal uh, hair cup cells, uh, hair cup cells in the uh, epithelium. And soon after radiation injury, the K5 positive cells increase from the basal to the supravasal area. So it's, it's quite possible that the basal uh, lower proximal cup cells, K5 positive cells, they proliferate to replenish the lost cells. To clarify this, uh, we do a linear tracing with K5 pre ER and TD tomato. So in the physiological uh, energy, we label them, uh, you, you can see the K5 positive cell lining on the outer surface of the hair bulb. And after 36 hours, uh, they, they still stay on the outside of the, uh, on the periphery of the hair bulb. They don't contribute to the internal structure of the hair follicle. After radiation injury, you can see this labeled cell quickly come into the germinated area and replenish the germinated cells. And at six, 36 hours, you can see they already come to the, the, the mature hair shed. So, and also how, how do they go there? This is a, a, a in vivo uh, imaging using left one RIP to see the dermal capita cells and K14, H2V, GFP to see the uh, epithelial cells. So you can see here, the low, low proximal cup epithelial cells, they don't move significantly in energy. But at the radiation injury, you can see they are jumping around. <laughs> and you can see the cell actually they come down to the bottom of the hair cup. And also, if you look at the, the bottom of the hair cup, there are cell different cell proliferation there. So we we think that the, the lower proximal cup epithelial cells they come down to the bottom, proliferate and come up, go up to replenish the those germinated <coughs> cells. And that's uh, radiation injury. We also test this in uh, chemotherapy injury by uh, cyclophosphamide. We also found that. When uh, hair follicles are injured by uh, cyclophosphamide, the lower proximal cup basal cells they come in and replenish the uh, da the damaged uh, germinative cells. So in physiological energy, the germinative cells, tech cell in the germinative cells, they proliferate and generate the internal structure of the hair follicle, and lower proximal cup cells. They take care of the outer surface of the uh, hair pulp and ORIs take care of the upper part. And after radiation injury, the germinative cells are killed. 
And this will flow of stem cell from the low proximal cup down to the bottom and up toward the uh, germinative uh, cell to replenish the lost cell. So this is the, the minor minor uh, injury. Then we look look. Then we further go on to look at a late generated attempt. This is uh, 5.5 grade. So there is, there is a more severe shrinkage of the hair follicle into the epithelial uh, strand. Then the epithelial strand start to elongate at, from the uh, 72 hour all the way to uh, day seven. So this short epithelial strand is a platform to regenerate the, the hair bulb. So the question is, what is the cell origin of this platform in the short epithelial strain? We do the uh, limit tracing with using uh, K5 pre uh, activity tomato to label the uh, uh, OIS cell, OIS cells. As the uh, hair follicles shrink and the the hair bulb uh, gradually uh, disappeared, and uh, the hair bulb cells and proximal cup cells they die, and you can see that. The epithelial strand is composed almost entirely from the K5 positive OI cells. And these cells go on to, to regenerate the lost hair bulb. So, how are the cells or progenitor cells within the short epithelial strand mobilized for regeneration? We, we use pulse. Uh, BRD, you uh, uh, we found that at 40, uh, 84 hours, the lower, lower tips of epithelial cells, they started to proliferate and generate the primitive hair bulb at 96 hours. So we think the regeneration is initiated by these uh, lower tip cells. And when we examine their uh, differentiation markers, we found these are the uh, lower, lower tip cells. They have markers very similar to secondary hair germ of the normal tail germ. They are positive for SARS-9 and also positive for LGR5 promoter activity. And we stand them, we found that the lower tip cells, they are negative for Bausch stem cell markers. And they are also negative for the differentiation markers of internal inner sheath cells and all other internal uh, structures. So they are undifferentiated. Then we are able to, we, we, we try to uh, linear trace them. We linear trace them with, with LGR53 uh, in tomato. We label these lower tip cells. And from 72 hours to day five, you can see these, these label cells that come down and regenerate the hair bulb. And we also found that these, uh, their, their progeny are actually present in both the matrix, and inner sheets, precortex, and also uh, basal proximal uh, cup cells. So they are in every compartment of the regenerative lower segment. And we further trace them, we found that when the antigen end and go back into teleogen, their progeny actually form back to the uh, secondary gen and uh, barge area in the next energy, their progeny contribute to the regeneration of the uh, lower segment in the energy. And what, what are Bosch stem cells doing in the late regenerated attempt? We found that Bosch stem cells did not proliferate until day five, when the hair bulb structure already uh, being regenerated. So this is also a stepwise activation. The lower tip cells activate first and the Bosch stem cells. And when you trace them, we found that the Bosch stem cells, they are activated, but they don't go down further to the bulb, hair bulb area. They only contribute to the uh, upper part of the regenerated uh, other machines. So, I added, when I want to piece the uh, tech cells, both in the, germ in the germinative cells and the uh, lower proximal cup cells. The outer rishi cells, they can remodel into uh, epithelial strain, and when they contact uh, with uh, thermal papilla cells, they acquire stem cell-like properties to regenerate both the uh, lower structure of the ongoing antigen hair bulb, but also 
they can regenerate the next energy instruction. And the next question is that what is the signal required uh, for energy repair? Now, uh, at the radiation injury, we, we stand the uh, hair follicle. Uh, we found that this PS, uh, first, uh, PS0 is the uh, indicator of the activating uh, mTOR signal. We found that after radiation injury in the hair pulp, the mTOR signal, signal is activated uh, until the, the hair follicle pulp is repaired. And then we ask whether uh, mTOR signal is required for this repair, reparative regeneration. We, so we, we inhibit uh, mTOR signal with dropamycin. We can see the PS theory is negative here. And then this is a radiation injury only. Uh, this, this, this is only very minimal uh, hair loss, but when mTOR signaling is inhibited, uh, the hair loss become, becomes very severe. So mTOR signaling is specifically activated in the uh, uh, transit amplifying cells in the hair pulp uh, after radiation injury and is required for proper and timely regeneration. So you can see here, this is IR only. But when uh, mTOR signal is inhibited, uh, this is regeneration. There is progressive uh, shrinkage from uh, 24 to 72 hours. But I also want to remind you that rapamycin only inhibits in, uh, uh, mTOR signaling in the energy. Actually, uh, it does not affect the duration or the normal progression of energy. So, in a, a physiolog physiological energy stage, uh, mTOR signal is not required for energy progression. And the, the, the final question is that how to prevent uh, chemo and radiation injury induced hair loss by targeting these extra bulge progenitor cells. <coughs> we found that uh, when, when uh, the, the energy hair follicles are irradiated, the wind signal, this, this is the left one, uh, the wind signal is suppressed. But the reactivation of uh, wind signal is required for uh, the regeneration. So, so we, we, we uh, hypothesize that augmenting the radiation into uh, induced uh, wind signal suppression. <coughs> augmenting the wind signal in after radiation injury can uh, prevent hair loss. So we insert uh, uh, Protein coated, uh, uh, we create protein coated beads here. You can see that in the uh, VSA controlled group, there's uh, uh, severe hair loss, but after wind shear treatment, it prevents hair loss. Then we go on to analyze what the, what, what's the effect of wind shear treatment. You can see here, this is the proliferation of uh, proximal uh, cup, uh, progenitor cells. Uh, wind shear treatment augment the proliferation of the low proximal pro, uh, cup progenitor cells. So there's a, they proliferate faster in the early stage after radiation injury. So that leads to uh, faster recovery of the uh, hair, damaged hair valve structure. And then we also uh, test whether this approach also uh, can help the, uh, to prevent hair loss. Uh, from chemotherapy injury. So this is cyclophosphide treatment. <coughs> uh, in the control group, cyclophosphide treatment at this uh, dose induces severe hair loss. But after wind 3 a uh, protein treatment, it prevents hair loss from uh, cyclophosphide uh, uh, treatment. And what I also want to remind you is that uh, the suppression of wind signaling after radiation injury is dependent on uh, uh, P53. So, in this case, we did not, uh, uh, did not, did not knock out P53, but use uh, wind, sig wind, uh, um, wind signaling augmentation, we can actually bypass the effect of the suppressive effect of P53 on the regenerative process. So, in summary, uh, the energy hair follicle are maintained by three distinct populations of tech cells uh, in uh, different compartments, uh, during native cells, uh, lower proximal cup, LPC, and other species. So in, when there's a minor injury, 
that uh, kill some of the germinative cells. The LPG cells behave as uh, stem cells. They come in to repair the internal structures. And at a higher dose of injury, we also see this in chemotherapy, uh, the, the germinative cells and also the LPG cells are depleted. They rely on the ORS tech uh, cells. They can come down and acquire stem cell-like uh, property to regenerate, regenerate uh, those hair bulbs. So I'd like to thank our collaborator, Max Pikers in the UCI, and also Michael Rento for providing us the fluorescent mice, and it's also Rob House for the chemotherapy, and, our, and also Michael Chen from uh, City University of New York, and our uh, Peter Chi and uh, Chen from uh, our university. And most of the work is done by uh, William Adam, uh, and the Emperor story is from uh, Way Home. I don't, I don't know why he should be so cool. Actually, he's also very hairy. <laughs> well, he is here. And also, uh, I like to thank our, uh, uh, the principals from these uh, agents. And this is the final slide, and I'd like to like, uh, thank you for your attention. Dr. Lin, what, what about cells outside of the hair follicle? You know, so the, the communication with the fat that you know is so important in cycling um, induced whether you have the, the, the chemo injury or the radio uh, therapeutic injury. Have you looked at, at the uh, coupling or uncoupling of, of the uh, fat the in fat cycling? Uh, we haven't checked that in detail, but we looked into the inflammatory response. We don't really see uh, uh, infiltrating uh, uh, fibrillary cells. I think for information, it's the early or uh, regenerative attempts. They, they, they don't really break uh, here, but for fat or other fibroblasts, we haven't checked that. That's a good suggestion. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. Dr. Tami. Thank you for your presentation. Are you sure that the uh, Type 2? In type 2? Type 2, uh, yeah, type 2 is so very slow. Damage cell go up to uh, barrage. <coughs> damage cell can go, escape from the damage and go, then go back to the barrage. Mm -hmm. And they contribute to the next energy entry. They, they can come down. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So uh, they have the uh, full barrage cell activity or character. I, I'm, we, we, we found that the, the labeled cells, they, uh, they, they go back to the, the secondary gem and also some of them are present in the lower large area, the labeled the lower tip cells. So we think they, they can, some, they, they differentiate to regenerate the hair bulb, but at the end of the energy, they, they seem to de-differentiate into a stem cell in the uh, second region and lower uh, bulge area, so they can, in the next energy, they can be activated to uh, regenerate the new energy structure. Thank you. Okay, thank you. 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 Th